going to consider a little bit more about what's termed daily motion. So the motion of the sky due to Earth's rotation on its axis. All right. So for this activity, imagine you are an observer shown on Earth in the northern hemisphere. And at the time is 6 p.m. Looking north, the sky will appear as shown in figure one. The positions and motions of the star in figure one can be understood by imagining yourself as the observer at the center of the celestial sphere as shown in figure two. In the celestial sphere model, Earth is stationary and the stars are carried on a sphere that rotates about an axis that points at the North Star. Note that only the portion of the celestial sphere that is above your horizon is shown. Oops, you can't see things below your horizon. The X uh, in both figures represents four of the positions through which star B will pass during the course of one revolution of the celestial sphere. And for now, we're going to ignore star A. We'll come back to that later. Okay. Note in figure one that the position of star B at 6 p.m. has been identified for you. Circle the number of positions, one, two, three, or four, in figure two that corresponds to the identified location of star B at 6 p.m. provided in figure one. So at 6 p.m. I'm going to see star B. I am looking north and low in the sky. So that means there. Position three. The rotation of the celestial sphere carries star B around so that it returns to the same position at about 6 p.m. the next evening. Not exactly, but we'll come back to that later. Label each of the X's in both figures with the approximate time at which star B will arrive. All right. So 6 p.m. And we'll have made a quarter turn when the star reaches position four. So that means midnight. Okay. It will be directly overhead at position one. Uh, quarter turn later, so that's going to be at 6 a.m. And then Another quarter turn later, star B is going to be in position 2, and that's going to be at noon. So it's going around midnight, sunrise, noon, sunset. Okay. Using figure 2, describe the direction you would look to see star B at 6 a.m. So at sunrise, at 6 a.m., I would have to look straight up. And the position being directly overhead or straight up is called the zenith. Label the direction of the zenith on figure two. How does the direction of the zenith compare to the direction that you identified in question three? point straight up, you're pointing at your zenith, and that is the same direction straight up that we identified for question three. In figure one, the path that star B follows is shown with a dashed line. Draw a small arrowhead on the path to represent the direction star B would be moving at the instant it is at each of the four locations marked with an X. All right. So that's the direction that this rotation is taking it. And we're just moving around a circle. So its direction is tangent to that circle. Using figure two, 
describe in words where you would look to see star A when it is halfway between rising and setting. So it rises here, sets there. So halfway between would be at that position. So I'd have to turn around and face south. And it is sort of halfway up the sky. So this altitude is about halfway, mid altitude. All right, let's go to the next part, part two. I'm looking east. Figure three shows an extended view along the eastern horizon, showing the positions of stars A and B at 6 p.m. The arrow shown, uh, the arrow shown is provided to indicate the direction that star B will be moving at 6 p.m. Call that in question six, you found that star A ends up high in the southern sky when it is halfway between rising and setting, and therefore never passes through your zenith. Draw a straight arrow at the X uh, in the east in figure three, the position of the star A at 6 p.m. to indicate the direction the star moves as it rises. Studying figure two will help you clarify your answer. All right, so let's go ahead and go through what uh, two students are thinking about this. Student one, stars move east to west, so any star rising directly in the east must be moving straight up so that it can end up in the west. If the arrow were angled, the star would not set in the west. I disagree. From figure two, the path of star A starts in the east, then it moves high in the southern sky, yet still sets in the west. To do this, it has to move toward the south as it rises, so I drew my arrow angled up and to the right. Do you agree or disagree with either or both of the students? Explain your reasoning. Uh, so student one is not correct for position in the northern hemisphere. Student two is going to be correct. So the star is going to rise due out of the east, but isn't going to go straight up because that would mean it crosses your zenith. And the star never gets that high uh, during the daytime. So it is moving along that path. So imagine you could see star B at noon. 15, min 15 minutes later, in which direction will star B have moved? All right, so star B at noon is, we found before it's going to be uh, over at the northwest. And so what direction is it going to be moving? It's a tangent to the circle. It's moving the direction of straight down. Let's see what a student is thinking. The amount of time that all stars are above the horizon is 12 hours because it takes 12 hours for a star to rise in the east and then set in the west. Do you agree or disagree with a student? And explain your reasoning. Well, that can't be true for all of our stars because we know, for example, that star B never rises, never sets. So it can't be true that 
a star in the sky is always going to be above the horizon for 12 hours and below the horizon for 12 hours. All right. My paper's straight. Try to. And consider a situation shown below in which the sun and a group of constellations are shown at sunrise. So sunrise, draw in the sun, that's in figure four, and then again, eight hours later, in figure five. So some students have some thoughts about this. So consider the following debate between two students regarding the motion of the sun and constellations shown in figure four and five. Student one. We know that the sun rises in the east and moves through the southern part of the sky and then sets in the west. Eight hours after sunrise, it makes sense that the sun will have moved from being on the eastern horizon near the constellation Cancer to located high in the southwestern sky near the constellation Aries. So these are constellations along the zodiac. Student two, you're forgetting that some stars and constellations also move from the east through the southern sky and to the west, just like the sun. So the sun will still be near Cancer eight hours later. So figure five is drawn incorrectly. It should show that the constellations have all moved like the sun, so Cancer would also be located high in the southwestern sky with the sun eight hours later. Do you agree or disagree with either or both of the students? Explain your reasoning, check your answers. Alrighty, agree or disagree with either or both students. So student two is on a roll so far. Daily motion of the sky is the Earth rotating on its uh, axis and it's the entire sky, not just the sun, um, that appears to move due to daily motion. So the sun cannot skip ahead over Cancer, Gemini, Taurus, and plop there in between Taurus and Aries. It's the entire sky that is moving together as the Earth rotates. So student two is correct, student one is incorrect. All right, and then last question. In question 11, we found that figure five was drawn incorrectly. Redraw figure five on the figure below by sketching the approximate location of any constellations from figure five that would still be visible. So we had the sun um, rising with cancer, being a little bit ahead of it. And then there's Gemini, Taurus, Aries, Pisces. Um, eight hours later, these guys will have already set below her horizon. So near the horizon would be Gemini, then cancer near the sun. these roughly. So there's Cancer. And then our twins for Gemini. Alright, and then it's not in the figure. But then the other constellations along the zodiac, it would be there. I'm not going to draw out uh, sort of their little dot diagrams, but it's Leo, then Virgo, then Lib. 
Libra, and then Scorpius would just be rising. So if at sunrise the sun is between Leo and Cancer, then all throughout that day the sun is going to be between Leo and Cancer. Um, the sun is going to move against those background stars about a degree per day because a year is basically uh, approximately 360 days long, so it goes about a degree a day. Um, and, but that is annual motion, and we'll talk about that, return to that topic later.